Hello, brethren. You are welcome to today's family devotional. God bless you. I am Pastor Yemi Omoboyega from the Christ Gospel Truth International Ministry in Yekiti. With me is my wife, Pastor Mrs. Mary Omoboyega. God bless you as you listen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to appreciate you this morning for giving us life to see another beautiful day. We thank you, Daddy, for a good night's sleep. Thank you for the peace that reigns overnight. Thank you, Lord, for all the works of your hands, entire planet Earth, and your heavenly places. Thank you for all the contents of all these planets and your and the heavenly places. Father, we appreciate you for your loving kindness towards us, your mercies that endures forever, your mercies that covers all our on uh, our, our sins. Thank you for the forgiveness of our sins from time to time. Thank you for renewed hope. Thank you for the hope of reigning with you even in the end of our lives. Accept our thanksgiving in your as me. Almighty Father, we come before your throne of mercy this morning. Please forgive us our iniquities in your as me. Today, Lord, as we come to your, come, you know, to your presence, please teach us what you want us to understand. Prepare our hands, our hearts for understanding. Today, Lord, let us do your will in Yahushua's name. Father, everything we shall do today, let it add up to making us to reign with you at the end of our journey in this world. Thank you, Father. In Yahushua's name, we have prayed. Amen. Um, the title of our message this morning is Enjoy the Peace That Surpasses All Understanding. Enjoy the Peace That Surpasses All Understanding. And uh, we are taking our Bible passage from the book of Proverbs. So we are taking our Bible passage from the book of uh, Psalm chapter 4. From verse 1 to 6. God bless you. Answer me when I call to you, my righteous God. Give me relief from my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. How long will you people turn my glory into shame? How long will you love delusions and seek false gods? Know that the Lord has set apart his faithful servant for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. Tremble and do not sin when you are on your beds. Search your heart and be silent. Offer the sacrifices of the righteous and trust in the Lord. Many Lord are asking, who will bring us prosperity? Let the light of your face shine on us. Fill my heart with joy. When their grain and new wine abound, in peace I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. Amen. In peace I will lie down alone. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be your portion in your Hoshua's name. Amen. Amen. Now, we are going to take this book of Psalm 4 together with the book of Matthew chapter 4 from verse 23 to chapter 5 to 25, 1 to 20. Matthew 4 um, 23 to chapter 5, verse 20. Then we're also going to take it together with Genesis chapter 9 to 11. Genesis chapters 9 to 11. Amen. Amen. The essence of what we are doing is to 
study at the same time, you know, take take a verse, a chapter from, I mean, take a passage from Genesis, from the book of Psalm, Matthew, and, and that is, in essence, Old and the New Testament, and we're treating them together. God bless you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. The book of um, Philippians chapter 4, chapter 4 verse 6 says, Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication. But in everything by prayers and supplication. With thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. Let your request be made to God. Let your request be made to God. And the peace of God. And the peace of God. Which surpasses all which understanding. Surpasses all understanding will, guide your heart, will guide your heart. And mind. And mind through Christ. Through Jesus. Christ Jesus. Or Yehoshua. Amen. 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 Enjoy the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. That's our topic. Amen. Now, brethren, if you listen to the passage, the book of Psalms that was read to us, let's read just the very first two lines. Amen. The very first two lines. So the very opening of that psalm, yes, says, Answer me when I call to you. Answer me, O Lord, when I come on to call my unto you. My righteous God. My righteousness. Give God. me relief from my distress. Give me relief from my distress. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. And hear my prayers. And hear my prayers. Amen. <laughs> Brethren, this world is full of battles just as we treated yesterday, and the resultant of which is stress for everybody. Amen. And let's just, from practical side of life, to give birth to a child is a problem. To train that child to become somebody in life is a problem. The child, when being trained, for instance, you send him out to school, to have the heart of learning is a big challenge. Is a big challenge. Then, not only that, for you to now able to, to introduce your child to God is a big is a big challenge. Because unless you catch them so young and you are so dedicated and God helps you and gives them a heart that is willing to learn. If your child has a playful heart, you are in trouble. May God deliver you from that. The best way is to follow Proverbs 2, 22 verse 6. Proverbs 20 verse 6. Train your child the way he should go. So that when he grows up, he will not depart from it. It's better you catch them young. Indeed, in my own case, what we did in our family is right from when they are in the womb, we start praying for them and and they, they, they came up to meet the word of God from our mouth, and we taught them. And to God be the glory, they received the word of God. So it's a very sensitive thing to parenting. Is very sensitive. Now, okay, look at, for you to work and what uh, have what Yoruba calls a kojo, that is, for you to work and uh, be blessed such that you have something that in the end, at the end of your labors, you will have peace. That is, you have something to eat to take care of yourself at old age. It's a big problem because the myriads of challenges that are facing us, there are too many. Amen. There are just too many. You find that savings is the most difficult aspect of our spending and sources of incomes. They are so, and then to even choose the right career, to choose the right wife, to do everything, you know, is a big problem. And all these things are bringing us stress all the time. Stress. Apart from the global happenings of government policies that are damaging uh, businesses that, I mean, accidents here and there, bad news all over the place, and so on and so forth. To even remain in Christ is a big challenge. May God Almighty see us through in Yehoshua's name. And then, 
to enjoy how do you enjoy the peace inside of all this i want to tell you it is easy it is possible and feasible for you to enjoy total peace inside these challenges and the attendant stress that you have on daily basis and the answer to that is give your life to christ because he's the giver of truth and peace amen if you read the book of um, matthew chapter 4 to 5 verse 20 that way i mentioned Christ even says, I have not come to abolish the law. So if you teach anything contrary to the law, I have come to fulfill it. Oh, I will say, I will say oh, this is, a, oh, no wonder, even the law is not cancelled. So those of you who are preaching um, that the Old Testament is cancelled and all that, uh, you are preaching fallacy. No, 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 no. Let me tell you. You see, the Christ started the fulfillment of the word of God. You know, was when Christ died and resurrected. You see, then the and Christ Himself taught us in Matthew 22, 37 to 39. Please, this a passage, this these are verses that I always teach or preach with. Don't forget. Christ says, please read Matthew 22, 37 to 39 for us. Okay, please start it from verse uh, 36 in particular. Teacher, yes. which is the great commandment in the law? Mm -hmm. Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, mm -hmm. with all your soul, mm -hmm. and with all your mind. Mm -hmm. This is the first and great commandment, mm -hmm. and the second is like it. Mm -hmm. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Praise the Lord. We give glory to God. You see, Christ made it clear here. There are several laws in the Old Testament. Law of Titan first fruit, love, um, you know, not shaving your beard, and so on and so forth. Too many, 613 of them in the book of the law. And now, Christ summarized it. Take note, summary. The most cogent, the most important. And Bible, Christ says, it is, you love your God with the whole of your heart and might. And the second one is like you love your neighbor as yourself. I've been teaching upon this neighboring neighborhood thing right from the beginning. Of hardly will you see my messages in the past that will not include who is your neighbor. Your neighbor is everybody, starting with your husband, your wife, your parent, your children, your your siblings, your community people, your community those whom you live together, those who whose action your action will impact their lives. For instance, if I'm a drug manufacturer and anybody that buys the product and the guarantee that I give to it is, I mean, I'm bound by it irrespective of where it is. It may be in America, it may be in the Australias of this world or in the, America, in the Americas. You know, that's okay. But what are we saying? Christ has come to fulfill the law. You see, the law, all the laws in the Old Testament in those days, if you committed a sin, you need to shed blood. But unfortunately, Christ says the law itself was weak. The blood of animals could not atone for us. So Christ fulfilled the shedding of the blood aspect to give us salvation by shedding his own blood. The blood that, you know, of a saint. God, Christ was a saint. Yahushua was a saint. He shed his blood, not because he sinned, but because of our own sins. Because he loved us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Now, let's now look at particularly the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes. There are eight conditions under which you may find yourself out of them. I think one or two are the ones that you may say you don't have stress on them. 
Now, see, blessed are the poor. Blessed are the poor. For theirs is the kingdom of God. Those who are poor in the spirit. And the answer to that is the book of Psalm 1, verse 1 to 6, where it says, delight in the study of the world. Those who are poor in the spirit, they want to know more about this God. They want to love God. They want to know who he is. They want to know what he wants them to do. And they are following all those things in the way. They are they, they brought themselves self low before God. They are not people that, you know, jettison the word of God, that even doubt the existence of God. So they are eager to serve the Lord. Amen. Now, number two, blessed, blessed are those who mourn. Of course, you know that this one carries stress with it. If one is, how is one mourning and yet is having peace of mind and is, is happy? Or is uh, someone who is money? Can we say he's at peace with himself or even with God? But the peace that surpasses all understanding means that even in your state of money, you are still with God and you still enjoy your peace because you know that money is but for a moment. It is going to fizzle away. Amen. Blessed are the number three. The meek. The meek. Okay, this one may not, even it carries stresses. Amen. <laughs> Blessed are the meek. Who, is, who are the meek? The humble, both in the spirit and even in appearance. What we equate with humility today may not be. Humility is at the heart. Amen. It's only manifested in the physical. The fact that, okay, um, you are humble before God Almighty. You are eager to establish relations with Him, to be with Him, always to be. Then if you are humble at heart, you want to fulfill the commandment of Christ, which is the greatest one, that is love God and love your neighbor as yourself. You want to do good to your fellow men. You don't want to harm anybody. But in the process, sometimes you may have to deny yourself experiencing stress. You may have to deny yourself. For instance, you know, those of us, I mean, people, uh, market women, let me use them as an example. You are selling your market and... Of course, the price is when you get when your customers get to you, you want they want to buy something. You will not on it, you will not place the price too exorbitantly. That becomes a problem for that person. Moderate gain. Bible says God hates a, a false measure. So anytime you are pricing something and people your customers come, you will be honest as to add minimal gain to your business. But to those who are not, who are not uh, meek or those who are not humble, all they do is, oh, they size you up. You look at your customer. You see, fraudulent sellers, they don't have a stable price. It's not like supermarket where the price tag is there for the poor and for the rich. Anybody wants can afford it. But the fraudulent buyer sellers, what do they do? They size you up. You come with the vehicle. Your price is 10 times the price of somebody who tracked him. You see, meekness you know makes you to say oh i have mercy upon my buyer and then you don't overprice them even the same thing with our workmen i mean um, what do you call them artisans or everybody even meekness makes you to say okay my company that i'm working for i will contribute the best to it i will not be taking unnecessary um absences and so on and so on and so forth amen meekness now if you are humble, blessed are you. Yes, next, blessed are hunger and thirsty. Those who are hungry and thirsty, you know, you see now, does hunger bring, does it not bring stress? If you are thirsty, does it, is it not stress? You quickly need water. Amen. If you are hungry and thirsty for the word of God, Psalm 1, verse 1 to 6, delight, you will delight in the word of God. Blessed are the thirsty and hungry. And then you will also delight in being thirsty and hungry to do good to people. Amen. Never to hurt people. Amen. Blessed are, yes. Merciful. The merciful. Bible says, God's mercy covers the multitude of our sins. Amen. Those who are merciful, they forgive. I remember one of our former presidents, this leader, is one guy 
fellow, I mean, his kinsmen that he had a sharp agreement with. And he's a Christian. I mean, we are not judging him. I'm just giving as an example for you to learn so that you don't do so. He says, I mean, our trouble cannot be settled in this world we will, we will, until we get to heaven. Only when we get to heaven. What does the Bible teach us? Forgive. Even your enemies. Matthew 5, 41 to 45. You see, they say, did for that. But I say, forgive your enemy. Pray for them. So, if you have the heart that is thirsty for God and thirsty to make heaven, <laughs> you will not hold anybody, you will not bottle up anybody in your heart. You will forgive right here. There's no question of getting to Who tells you that when you get to heaven? And God will now sit down and be judging you between you and the person you consult, consider to be your enemy. Blessed are uh, the next one. God bless you. The pure in heart. The pure in heart. Amen. This one has to do with our integrity. Amen. Integrity. Pure in heart. Your heart is pure. You don't want to hurt anybody and you are not hurting anybody. You don't want to cheat anybody. You, are, you, mean, you fear God in everything you do. You are pure. You don't want to turn the path of falsehood. That's it. the same Psalm 1, verse 1 to 6. You delight in the word of God. You want to obey the things that are there. Joshua 1, 8 to 10. You study the word of God day and night, and then you want to endeavor to do everything that the Lord asks you to do. Like, wives, submit to your husbands. Wives, labor with your hands. Proverbs 31, 11 to 21. Submit to your husband. Proverbs um, sorry, Ephesians 5, 23. Then, husbands, love your wives. Ephesians 5, 23, 24. And then, and then uh, children, honor your parents. Exodus 20, verse 12. And so on and so forth. Train your child the way you should go, parents to children. Train your child the way you will not leave your children. To be wrong. You have, because of integrity, you don't want the children later to come and Saw your name, soil your name, your family's name. What do you do? You train them the way of the Lord. Proverbs 22, verse 6. And then, even ministers of God, you don't preach what Christ does not preach. Christ preach, preaches love, and the monies that are gathered in the church substantially are to be plowed back to better the life of the people. It's 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Then giving to the church of God, you don't oppress them to give to the church of God out of compulsion, either by persuasion or by cajoling or by manipulation. The book of Second Corinthians chapter 9, 1 to 5, amen, it says, let's we give out of compulsion, like we're demanding for tithes and everything that, you know, which are bringing pains to the people and because they are not able to fulfill men, they go out outside, they, they, they run away from God. In fact, your ultimate goal will be to draw them in. Do all you can, even if you can't give them some, don't drive them away again. Let them come in. All ye that are labored and heavy laden, let them come, let them have rest in the house of God. Know that you, you monitor their lives, you monitor their time, you do everything to destroy their lives. And you don't know. So, you see, if you are pure in heart, you will have conscience that Hebrews 7 has told us tithing, a first fruit, all the have been erased, but you will not preach them now, only to disadvantage the people. And then anything that comes to the church out of voluntariness from as the purpose in their heart, you still apply it back to redistribute it among the people so that it will be they will have food to eat and then the rich will not be richer and the poorer will be poor will not be poorer. That's what the Bible tells us. Second Corinthians chapter eight. Amen. The next, sir. Ma. The peacemakers. Children of God cannot be found in a place where, you know, it is trouble, trouble, trouble. You are for you are to make peace amongst people. It doesn't mean that the people will accept to. That's one thing, because children of perdition, there's no how you try. They will not yield. Some people love trouble. They love, you know, dragging people up. And some people enjoy making play, the place tumultuous, the, a place anywhere they are. 
to be riotous, to be, you know, charged. But inside provocations, you still try to make peace amongst people. The Bible says we should live as much as is possible. God knows that there is stress inside. As much as possible, we should live in peace with all men, not all Christians, all people, everybody. Amen. So you should be in the arena of making peace. Blessed are those who make peace. It's also a fruit of the Spirit. It's an obedience to love your neighbor as yourself. You want peace in your environment all the time. Like I said, even in the process of you may even be ridiculed, though, you will still endure. Because what are you going to say? The uh, Bible even says, if you come to somebody and you want to preach to them and say, don't come to my house. What did the Bible say? Dust the sand of that place that is under your sand and say, sorry, I'm sorry. Just say bye-bye. God is the one that does conversion, not man. But don't force yourself on them. So in a, be at peace with everybody. Now, if you look at the book of Genesis, let's summarize that. You see, the book of Genesis chapter 9 talks about what happened after the flood had destroyed the world. The continuity we have, you know, um, um, Ham, Japheth now, and um, what was the name of those three children of uh, Noah? Just one. Yeah. The, non, the children, the sons of um, Noah, they are Shem, um, Ham, Japheth. and Japheth. All right? Japheth and uh, Ham, what did they do? They covered the nakedness of their father after the father had become drunk and he laid himself naked. That is, honor your parents, Exodus 20. Those two children fulfilled that. But you see that the other one that didn't fulfill it became the slave of others because the father cursed his lineage. Amen. You see, that's why the Bible says, honor your parents so that your day will be long in the, day, in the land that the Lord has given to you. When you are honoring your parents, you are adding to your longevity. You are praying for yourself. You see, many of us, we have issues. Now you want to ask me, what happens? How does this one tally with a joy, peace of mind? You see, Noah, even in spite of his weakness, you know, alcohol does not produce anything good. I mean, drunkenness does not produce anything good. How do you control drinking moderately? The best thing is if you can, avoid alcohol entirely. But look at the result of what happened to Noah here. After being drunk, he was naked. That is the lot of drunkards. But that knowledge, the Bible says, even, even when they fall into gutter, they will say, anyway, he said, they beat me and I wasn't, uh, it doesn't pain me and, you know, I will still drink again. You see, leery to, you see, all this is, Noah had that challenge, but God still overlooked it. The same thing, you and I, God looks, overlooks our wickedness, our mercy, you know, has mercy upon us. So even in our stressful state, this is a stressful period for even both the, the Noah, no, Noah's family generally, but yet God still had mercy. May God Almighty have mercy upon us. And it also tells us in that period of, it's the continuity of the way I, you know, I mentioned it earlier that the whole generation of mankind preceding Noah was wiped out. That is why the descendants of Cain are no longer in the present dispensation of humanity because they have all been wiped out. No survivors. Amen. Because it was after they have done all they are something that no God wiped away everybody. So you can now see that except Noah, through whom continuity comes. Even in that stressful situation, God was still with us. So may God Almighty be with you. Now in summary, what we are saying is that you will experience stress in every facet of your life. Your spiritual life, your career life, your marital life, your parenting life, your um, you know, trying to acquire wealth for yourself, planning for your future. You know, how many businesses have one undertaken that have gone under? There are so many 
Praise the Lord. As the Lord God Almighty lives, you will enjoy peace even in the midst of your troubles. The only way you can be stable inside all this wahala of this world is when you are in the Lord, when you are in Christ, when you are in God and God is in you. When you are money, you still believe that there is hope. Even when it is peaceful, you know there is hope and it can be better. In every situation, you'll be giving thanks to God. May God Almighty give you peace that surpasses all understanding. How do you see it? It's, it surpasses all understanding for you to be money. And yet they say you have peace of mind. For, your, for you to be sacked in your place of work. And then you see, yes, you have peace in mind. Then for you to uh, be experiencing one challenge, or maybe health problem, for you to still have peace of mind, for you to have financial um, poverty, and then you still have peace of mind. Even when you are not certain of what to eat next, it's only God that can give this kind of peace. For instance, today, whether I'm broke or whether I, there is a plus it you, I remain steady in Christ because I know that even if it is rough now, it's just but for a moment. But if if not, all these things are the things that make people to commit suicide. Homes are breaking every day, children are disobeying their parents, they are becoming more violent and more uh, careless. Not, not remembering their parents and all that, even to their society. And then people are running away from the house of God. That should not be. Even in the midst of saying, oh, they are troubling us in the church. And too much trouble. Go to your church anyway. Serve your God. You are not serving money. Don't let the pressure for money drive you away. Go there. Give voluntarily what the Lord has laid upon your heart. Don't be stingy. You yourself know that there is no blessing for those who don't give. Life is give and take. Bless your church. Bless your ministers. Bless your family. Bless everybody. May the Lord God Almighty bless his word in Yahushua's name. I think these words are instructive for you. And I pray. I believe that they have blessed you. Please share them widely. Subscribe to our channel. God bless you. See you tomorrow. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you once again for this message this morning. Accept our thanks in your Yahushua's name. Almighty, the grace for us to be with you, love you, and love our neighbors as ourselves, so that at any point in time we shall be at peace with you and our neighbors. Grant unto us in Yahushua's name. Father, we thank you. Blessed be your name. In Yahushua's name, we have prayed. Amen. God bless you.